This is um, rose quartz. Rose quartz? Yeah. Oh, really nice. Thank you, thank you. I need to get more like this. Danichi's amazing. We, he, he probably doesn't need much introduction, but he is going to do a special class for you tonight. Crystals, Tree of Life, and Tarot. He's super excited, and um, I just want to say, Danichi, thank you for being here, and the stage is yours. Come on out. Mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Incredible. <laughs> Hello, welcome everybody. Thank you for thank you to Flow Life for having me here today. Can you guys hear me in the back? Yeah. Excellent. I, I took vocal training so I could project pretty well. Okay, excellent. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys about the tree of life itself, the Kitzheim, and how to build it within your body utilizing Jungian archetypes, the 12 Jungian archetypes. Uh, today we had papers passed around to you guys which are aspect which are bridges to the tree of life pathways now the tree of life as you all know represent states of consciousness like a tree is made up of the conscious mind the physical body you have the superconscious which is the god state the subconscious which is the feminine and the unconscious which is your negative ego aspect so today i'm going to show you how you can utilize crystals and connect to those pathways, okay? So if you guys have questions, feel free to ask while I'm going, okay? Um, I need my marker and my pen, all right? Got it all here. So, okay. <laughs> so, Deviku. Let's see, I'll give you guys some Kabbalistic terms, okay? Deviku is the goal of the Kabbalist. Clinging to God by good works and virtuous deeds. Kabbalah is not a Jewish Orthodox belief, as many believe. It was preserved within the aspects of mystic Judaism, but is found within the teachings of Zoroastrianism in Babylon. You'll find it within the Maya, the Inca, the Aztec, the Olmec, the Norse. They all have a tree of life, and that tree is about connecting to that higher consciousness. Utilizing the Tarot, you can do it as well. So I'm going to show you. I usually start off with the wheel, the circle, to show you what tarot actually is. So you have a, a circle like so. Okay? So we have a circle and we have a cross. We'll do a cross. So finally you have the word oop, tarot. As you know, the last C is silent, so we don't use it but I'm going to use it for something else, I'll show you. So playing with the word tarot, you get the word rota, which is the Latin word for wheel. Second, when you play with the words again, you get the word ator. I'll explain what this means in a moment. Then finally, you get the word orate. And lastly, you get the word Torah. Sorry, this board is wiggling. <laughs> it's an excited board. Can you see this? <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay, so, uh, so Torah, as you guys all know, is the five books of Moses, the first five books received to Moses on Mount Sinai. Torah, rota, is wheel. Ator is another word to say the divine feminine goddess from Kemet, Egypt, Hathor. Hathor, who is the keeper of knowledge, keeper of secrets, the divine feminine, the Shekinah, because the goal of Kabbalah is to revive the Shekinah, the divine feminine aspect that has been repressed for thousands of years. Now we're going to bring her back to life today. Today, you guys will receive light initiations today to connect to that aspect. So finally, you have Hathor, orate, to speak. Hathor, rota, the wheel and the Torah, the law. So it means the hidden law is kept within the divine feminine and spoken through that truth. That's what Tarot translates as. That's where we're able to read it. 
So I want you guys to get this all down. Okay. So no religion is wrong because they all stem from a philosophy which were necessary instruments to refine the practice of Kabbalah. We shape the cosmos as a micros microcosmic aspect of God, projecting the macrocosmic aspect of God, the omnipresence of God. Kabbalah has been perfected by centuries for anyone and everyone willing and eager to connect themselves to the Ein Sof, which is the infinite ultimate God source, which is neither male nor female. It's just an energy. And finally, Tikkun. Tikkun is the act of cleaving or repairing. Tikkun is like what the Buddha spoke about when he mentioned Dharma. And the Dharma is virtuous deeds which repair this world. This world has many anomalies and it is the lowest heaven aspecting the highest hell. So every time we do good deeds, we regenerate that aspect of our higher consciousness and we bring the energy down into us. I'm going to show you guys how the serpent, the word neshama, is not the same as the word rai, which means evil. They're not the same, but because this has been a patriarchal society, we considered, we, rather we said that the divine feminine was evil. And so we called her the serpent for many, many years. Okay, so pomegranate, as you guys know, is the fruit of Rosh Hashanah. It has exactly 613 seeds inside a pomegranate. And in the High Priestess, let me put this on the floor for a second. High Priestess card, I'm sorry, I wish I had more of these to pass out, but I'll, I'll try my best to show you what I can. In the High Priestess card, you have pomegranate fruits, five pomegranate fruits behind her. And so, in the Jewish laws, called the Mosaic Laws, there are also 613 laws for one seed in the pomegranate fruit. So the High Priestess has the horn aspects of the cow goddess Hathor. Next to her two pillars of wisdom and severity, she sits on the throne with the Hebrew words Bet and Yud. The numeric value of Bet and Yud equal 12 corresponding to the astrological symbols, the 12 astrological symbols and the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, so just going back to Exodus, Exodus, um, the bells and pomegranates alternated around the hem and the robe worn for ministering as the Lord commanded Moses, the epod, the robe, the holy robe of the high priest of Israel, which I'm going to show you. It's over here. It has the 12 breastplate stones. And it says that on the bottom there were, there were embroideries of pomegranates to, to show that the secret of Shekinah is kept within the Mosaic law and the pomegranate seeds. That's why it's so special in Rosh Hashanah. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this part right here. I know there's a lot. I told you guys bring uh, bring some material to write. It's gonna be a lot of stuff. 